Welcome to Ag Shorts. I'm Kalen. With me is my father, Brandon. Today, we're going to talk. We already discussed hay costs and some of the repercussions from that, but also animal supplementation. So normally, we supplement the cows with cake. Uh, we'll also provide mineral to the horses and the cows. But the real question is, Dad, do you give any additional supplementation to the horses? Because they're a little odd. <laughs> they they roam more. They also are willing to paw through the, the snow a little bit better to get access to grass. Um, but then also, you know, they've got their own, they do get hay as well, but is there any additional supplementation that you give, uh, to the horses that you normally would to the cows or, or anything like that? Not really. Occasionally I'll go out with a bucket of grain and just let them, you know, have a, a few bites, you know, a yeah. half pint of, of grain, but it's not every day. It's not a supplement. It's just, you know, it's more of a conditioning thing that they'll come to you. Uh, not that there's an issue with that anyway, but you, know, you just kind of feel sorry for them. But um, one of the big things to do with the horses that uh, we do with the cows too, but I want to make sure they're on a really good worming regime. Um, you know, you can burn through a lot of hay, a lot of calories that's not put through the animal that parasites are, you know, stealing from them. So you want to make sure that that's, that's done. Um, one of the things that's a little tough is uh, when it's really cold weather, we tend to get lice on our our cows develop, you know, spots of lice on them. And so keeping uh, some of that down with a, either the pour on, or uh, I got some back rubs up that we have in the summertime that for fly control as well. And uh, so it works just as well for lice and having that up that way, they're not losing hair. They're not, again, expending more type of uh, a different, they're in a different way, more energy. So doing that, the horses, um, I don't feed them every day. But, you know, I've only got, I think that one the bigger pasture out there, there's like 11 head. And so I'm not feeding small bales to them. I will take out a, a large round bale of grass hay. And I did hold some grass hay back uh, to get through this winter and was able to do that because uh, I, I always try to build in a little bit of contingency. Had some, uh, it was fine. It's really good grass hay from the year before. You, wouldn't, you couldn't even tell it's last year's hay. Uh, cause we put it up right. Uh, we didn't put it up. I guess we stacked it right, but it was put up well, uh, no mold in it, anything like that. So I've got that that's going through them and I will, uh, just string that bale out there and in, in different spots, I just won't run it out into a big ribbon with that, uh, round bale, but I'll pick it up and, and drop it in spots because those horses tend to fight, you know, they're, you got dominant horses. And the last thing you need to do is having horses running around uh, from other horses and all of them expend an energy doing that and then giving them plenty to pine, but I watch them as well. So they'll, they'll feed on that, on a 1200 pound bale, you know, four or five days really. Uh, Cause they don't sit on the hay all the time too. They, they go off and graze. They, they are, they're, they, they're roamers, they're movers. So I'll see them clear out on the other side of the pasture, um, you know, just nipping at whatever they can and seeing what's on the other side of the fence, but come to it. They'll pick some more up, go to water, and then they'll walk past it. So it'll, it'll stretch. It seems a little further for them. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. The, the thing that I didn't expect was you to say the warmer, but that, I mean, that's a very good oh, yeah. uh, addition to that. It, it's not necessarily supplementation. It's more mitigation for disease and, and, and some of those parasites, but no, it's, it's still something that's important for trying to keep their weight up and, and maintain their, uh, I guess their, their livelihood throughout the year. Right. Well, and, and you're just letting them take care of themselves. I mean, we don't put blankets on them. Right. Uh, that's a good, that's a good way to make a horse sick, uh, in this country, especially, um, you know, let them grow out a good thick hair coat. Uh, why, and you're always watching their health. I mean, you're constantly watching their health to make sure you don't have somebody who's losing a lot of weight. Uh, something's going wrong with them. You know, they're limping and one was limping here the other day, but we had so much snow and cold. We had ice balls built up or, you know, like compacted snow underneath their feet. And sometimes they'll limp with that. Well, all you got to do is knock it off and, and go, but it, it, it puts a little bit more pressure up on that frog or up on the sole of their foot. And sometimes it'll make them uh, carry it or limp on it. And I was watching that older mare uh, and she doesn't act old by any means, but you know, she's 20 and she's packing that leg and went, Ooh, maybe she's gotten in a fight being dominant. And, you know, somebody got a, a, a lucky hit on her. Watched her the next day. Yep. Snow was gone off of her foot. She was walking just fine. So I think that's what it was. 
yeah. but you're, you're, again, you're constantly evaluating them. Yeah. Well, with that, that's animal supplementation and some uh, risk mitigation throughout the winter time.